in my life. I get a new blessing. Oh, the Lord says new blessings my way. And he does it over and over and over again. Come on, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. We want to say God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining the broadcast today. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. Um, we want to go before the Lord in a brief word of prayer. But before we do that, we want to uh, definitely thank God for you listening and joining us one more time. And so let us go before the throne of God and let us touch and agree today. And we're going to get right into our lesson plan on today. Let us pray. Eternal Savior, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for your mercy and grace. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the plan of salvation. We thank you, Lord, for God touching souls and touching lives throughout this broadcast. We thank you, O oh God, for, O oh God, blessing those that are tuned in and those that have been, O oh God, supporting the broadcast. We pray thy blessings. O oh God, upon each and every listener and subscriber, far and near, we pray now, God, through the Faith in God Internet TV broadcast, that souls will be touched, O oh God, and people will be encouraged, and O oh God, that hearts and listeners will be strengthened in the inner man. And Lord, those that seeking to, O oh God, be born again, those that seeking, O oh God, to be filled with all the goodness of God, we pray thy blessings now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us now as we give you thanks and praise. You're worthy of all the glory. You deserve all the honor. We thank you right now for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Oh, God, for, oh, God, the people of God and for us, we thank you. And we praise you right now. We thank you, Lord, for the Pentecostal Power Church family. We thank you, oh, Lord, for our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for our first lady. We thank you, Lord, for the people of God. And Father, as we pray now, we pray, God, that we would decrease, that your anointing would increase. And, oh, God, that hearts, oh, God, would be touched. And, oh, God, oh, God, strengthen. And most of all, God, we pray that we will continue to be an effective witness, oh, God, throughout the world and abroad, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, those that are behind prison walls, those in the hospital. Look on our brother Terry. Look on our family. Look on our unsaved loved ones. Look on our grandchildren. Look on, oh God, the people of God's children. Listen to those, oh God, oh God, that are crying out to you, Lord. Hear our humble cry. Hear our petition, Lord, as we cry out, oh God, for the, oh God, social injustices throughout our world. We pray, God, that you would continue, Lord, to help us look to you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that can bring justice, peace, and equity. Oh, God, through the plan of salvation and Father, help us to look to the hills from which cometh our help. All of our help coming from you, oh, Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Continue to look on our mother Summers, look on our mother Flowers, look on our mother Heron, look on all the aged saints, Lord. Continue to let your blood cover them throughout this pandemic. And oh, God, continue, oh, God, to show your hand to be mighty in the lives of your people. And Father, we forever thank you. We give you glory and praise. We ask you to look on those different, oh God, oh God, churches that contacted us, oh God, in 12 different countries. We pray now that you would supply their every need according to your riches. We pray for every, oh God, uh, group leader, oh God, that have reached out to us on this week, those that desired prayer, those that desired counsel. We pray now, God, that you would continue 
oh God, to unlock, oh God, your divine wisdom in their lives. And oh God, that they may see the hand of God and that they might receive, oh God, your blessings. We pray now in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we give you glory. Direct us now. The words we should speak concerning, oh God, this lesson plan today, God. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would help us today. To, oh God, have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Help us concern this topic today, listening to God. And Father, we thank you and we forever give you praise. And Lord, we forever give you glory. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray to the glory of God. Thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We bring your greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom, with the Faith in God Internet TV. And we're here on Podbean Live uh, on the Fidget Broadcast. And we want to uh, give a shout out to the people of God as we give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to our Honorable Pastor, Bishop Ellis Murchison Sr., and to um, Lady Murchison, and to my own wife, Missionary Newsom, and to the entire Pentecostal Power Church family. We say God bless you. Uh, we love you in Jesus' name. We give a shout out to our precious Mother Flowers. Uh, we want to thank God for you uh, listening in, a faithful listener to the broadcast. And so we pray, uh, we hope and pray that all is well with the people of God. And we do have a praise report. We thank and praise God for the Lord uh, blessing our oldest brother to go through his procedure. And we just thank and praise God that, you know, God is, uh, he's a great God and he's, uh, he's yet working in the lives of those that trust him. And so we need to trust him more. Praise the Lord. And so we, we thank God for him being so merciful to us and we don't deserve the blessing, but we yet tell the Lord, thank you, uh, regardless to, and in spite of, we want to say thank you, Lord. And so let us get into uh, our lesson plan on today, our, our topic uh, that was derived. We talked about the importance of uh, today. We want to talk about the importance uh, of listening uh, to God, listening to the voice of God. And uh, we're going to get into some stuff today and we want to um, deal with it um, on scriptural level. Everything we talk about is uh, scripture based and uh, we dare not give our opinion. But we uh, fact check everything based on scripture. And so um, that's what we're using today um, to teach the lesson, the word of God. And so um, nothing can be disputed when it comes to the word of God, because it's been already established uh, by uh, the Lord and his uh, holy prophets and those uh, that were uh, witnesses of these things. And so let us get into the word of the Lord as we talk about the importance, uh, we want to talk about listening to God, but we want to talk about the importance of listening. Amen. And uh, sometimes we get too busy that we can't hear the voice of God. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in what we're doing, um, we actually can't hear from God. And so uh, people are called to uh, listen attentively uh, to God's word. Um, you know, we'll start with Samuel. I like to, uh, use my sidebar. Um, you know, Samuel was called and, uh, you'll see it in first Samuel, go to first Samuel chapter three. We're going to go there, but you know, we have Zechariah seven and 11 through 14, uh, Matthew 13 and 11. And we came from yesterday, Isaiah, six and nine through uh, about 11 there. And so uh, we kind of finished uh, that off yesterday, um, Isaiah chapter nine. And then we also went to Proverbs chapter 29, verses one and two. And we went to Isaiah like six and eight through 10. I think that's what we dealt with yesterday. But uh, I just want to say to the people of God, um, you know, God calls Samuel and sometimes you know, when God is dealing with us on our initial uh, experience or encounter with him, um, we can, uh, we too can miss the call or not be familiar uh, with God calling us. And, uh, 
Uh, let's let the scripture do the talking. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 1. It says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. And it says, There was no open vision. Praise the Lord. And verse 2 says, And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. An ear lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. Okay, First Samuel 3 and 4. We have verse number 4. That the Lord calls Samuel. Now look at this verse of scripture, verse 4. It says that the Lord called Samuel. Okay. And when the Lord called Samuel, he answered. And he said, here am I. Okay. The Lord called Samuel and he answered. And he says, here am I. And he ran to Eli. Look at this now. And he ran to Eli. And said, here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And when he went and he lay down, and the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli. And said, here am I, for thou didst. Call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Eli tells him, I call not my son. Lie down again. Okay. Verse number seven, first Samuel three and seven. It reads, Now Samuel did not know the Lord. He was in the temple but he didn't know the Lord. How many millions of people go to somebody's church, but don't know the Lord and don't know his voice. This is the importance of listening. Praise the Lord. Cause when the word of God is being taught, preached and, uh, you know, uh, spoken, we need to have ears to hear. Okay. And, uh, he said, Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. It says he did not know the Lord and neither was the word revealed to him. Sometimes we go to somebody's church, we sitting up getting word every Sunday. And we wonder why people not getting no better. They not getting revelation from God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And this is why I thank God for our pastors and our leaders and we have to pray for our pastors and our leaders, you know, that they begin to uh, uh, give the same message, but change uh, the method of delivery because people are not getting it. So, well, what do you mean? Methods change, but the principle must stay the same. And sometimes when you're saying things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and people are not getting it then you got to come at another angle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so, you know, I, I thank God because this lesson has helped me. Uh, and I thank God for my bishop because he's seeing some changes in the church. You know, um, I see the Lord dealing with him on some issues and he's meditating and he's thinking about uh, moving forward with the ministry. And in moving forward with the ministry, I can really see uh, some things he's waiting on, you know, the Lord for direction on, which is rightly so. But when we look at the condition of the people and I'm dealing with the relationship between uh, Eli being the mentor and Samuel being the mentee, praise the Lord. <laughs> and so at the point that God does this calling, he didn't say, he didn't tell Eli to tell Samuel that he was being called. So 
So let's get this right scriptorially. When God is calling you, he speak directly to you. All right now. Now let we can we can get in some theological points if we want to. But please call me. I'm on the line. 414-628-0568. When God is talking, he speaks directly to us. Praise the Lord initially. But because Samuel was untrained, he went to Eli. Because that was the voice. That was the man of God. That was the person that he had the most encounter and relationship with. And so in, in God dealing with him, God comes in a synonymous type voice that sounded just like Eli. Praise the Lord. And so Samuel being untrained and not knowing the Lord, he mistook it for his leader. Praise the Lord. And so he got up and he went to him and said, you calling me? And he said, son, I call you not. Go ahead and lay back down. I'm paraphrasing now. But it says here in verse uh, eight, it says, and the Lord called Samuel again the third time. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many times God has been calling you? Now, don't answer it. Somebody's out there listening. I know you're listening to this broadcast. You're listening to um, this particular lesson today. How many times God has spoken to us? Sometimes it's two or three times. And the third time that he speaks to Samuel. Praise the Lord. It says in verse eight, and the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli. He had the same response. He didn't know where to go. He didn't know what to do. This is why we need good, wholesome leaders and teachers. And Eli being the mentor directed him. Now let's look, let's see what happens here. And we're going to get into this listening to God thing. We just want to lay the foundation here. We talked about some things yesterday, but I'm kind of ramping it up here so we can kind of see, uh, you know, where we're headed here with this. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time and he rose and he went to Eli and said, here am I for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Praise the Lord. Samuel still didn't know what was going on. Praise the Lord. Even though he heard, he didn't know what was going on. Verse nine, therefore Eli said unto Samuel, go lie down. Now he's mentoring him. He's training him. He told him to go lie down. Praise the Lord. And it shall be, if he call thee, thou shalt say, speak, Lord for thy servant hear it. This is the proper way to answer the call. You know, he says, speak Lord for thy servant hear it. And so Samuel went and lay down in his place. Verse 10, I'm in first Samuel three and 10. And he says, and the Lord came and stood and called as other times. Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel answered, speak for thy servant here. Speak for thy servant here. And the Lord said unto Samuel, behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both ears of everyone that hear it shall tingle. And that's what I want to talk to the people of God about. The importance of listening. Do we hear the tingling? Praise the Lord. Because God is speaking to the people of God. We should be hearing the tingling now. Those of us that's in the church, born of the water and of the spirit, we should be hearing the tingling. That it's time to get out here and win souls and witness. It's time to get out here and work for the Lord. It's time to tell the good news of Jesus Christ but we can't tell it until God gives us a message. Praise the Lord. Because we're going to go to the store and we ain't going to know what we're going for. 
How many of us? You know, I'm I'm on my sidebar. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm on my sidebar. There are many times, especially when we were young kids, mom and them used to send us to the store and we would uh we would forget to get the grocery list or the instructions. But we would uh, you know, you know how sometimes you do you so anxious to go get that penny candy or whatever, you know, your mom and them was gonna let you get. You got you got your little change and you know, you forgot all about the grocery list, but you went to the store and you knew what you was going to get. You was going to get you some uh, play, stage planks and, you know, you were going to get you some bubble gum. You know, that penny, that big old penny bubble gum, you know. But guess what? You got to the store and you didn't even know what you went to the store for. And you said, I know mom and daddy sent me to the store, but I didn't. I didn't and then they, the, you know, the store clerk looking at you saying, what, what else did you come for? Well, I really didn't get the message. I really didn't get the instruction. Praise the Lord. And so we need to listen. We need the importance of listening is to hear from God so we can get the instructions and the message and what God wants us to share. And sometimes, praise the Lord, uh, we get it through our mentor. And that's where Samuel was looking to. When he heard the voice of God, he turned to Eli, his mentor, rather. So Samuel turned to his mentor, Eli, and he was looking for some type of instruction. Praise the Lord. And Eli did give him the instruction for to say, speak, Lord, for thy servant, hear it. And so now God speaks directly to him after he's been taught what to do and how to listen. We, too, must be taught how to listen. Praise the Lord. And hear the word of God. Praise the Lord. And sometime we'll end up going before we get the message. Praise the Lord. And we don't want to do that. Christians must not only listen to God's word, but we must also put it into practice. Praise the Lord. Those who refuse to listen to God's word or refuse to, you know, listen to correction, you're going to face condemnation. And so God doesn't want us to face condemnation. So it's very, very important that we hear and listen to God. God spoken directly and audibly to Moses and to Joshua. These are these are predecessors before, you know, we get to Samuel, uh, Eli and Samuel. God spoke directly to Moses and Joshua. Praise the Lord. And, you know, by Eli's time, there was no prophet. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The Bible said now, uh, it says the word was precious in those days and there was no open vision. There was no prophet. So the first prophet that God raises up is Samuel. Praise the Lord. Praise be the name of God. He raises him up uh, for the people of Israel. Okay. And God, uh, you know, there was no prophet speaking God's message to Israel as a nation at that time. And so God raises up Samuel. Praise the Lord. And God raises up Samuel. And listening was a vital part of the relationship of Samuel responding to God's message. Praise the Lord. We too, as, uh, you know, as servants of God, we got to have enough time and patience and, and, and relationship to receive and respond. Receive the message from God and respond faithfully to it. Praise the Lord. You know, God does not always use the sound of a human voice. And so we can't get caught there. He doesn't always use that. Sometimes he speaks clearly through the word of God. God could be speaking to someone right now as we talk. But he always speaks clearly and decisively through the word of God. So you, when you walk away from receiving the word of God, you clearly know what the expectation is what God wants and desires of you. Now you may be fearful. You may be reluctant. You may not want to do it, but you're not going to walk away. Not having a clear understanding of what God is calling you to do. Okay. Uh, to receive his message, we must be ready to listen. Listen to me, my friend. And we need to act on what he tells us. Be witnesses. Praise the Lord. 
we have a responsibility to be witnesses. And like Samuel, we ought to be ready to say, here am I, Lord. Like Isaiah said, he said, here am I, send me, I'll go. Praise the Lord. We have to be willing to be participants. Praise the Lord. Not spectators, but participants in the role and in the call of God. We need to hear from God. God was raising him up, praise the Lord, and getting him ready, amen, to go give a message to the people of God, which was the Israelites. And so as we go a little bit farther today, I want to go to Luke 5, uh, chapter 5. Let's go to Luke chapter 5, uh, and we're going to get ready to get out of here because we've, we've already expired a lot of time. But I wanted to get that that across to, uh, uh, today. We thank God. Uh, uh, again, uh, for all of our listeners, we're going to go to St. Luke um, chapter 5, okay? So let's look at Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. Okay, it says, And it came to pass that the people pressed on him to hear the word of God. And it says, He stood by the, the lake of uh, Genesaret, and he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's. It says, and prayed him uh, that he would thrust out a little from the land. Okay. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Praise the Lord. In order for God to be able to teach those people out of the ship, they had to have uh, the desire to hear from God. Praise the Lord. They had to have a hung, hunger and a thirst. In Matthew, he says, in Matthew 5, it says, for they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Okay? For he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. In Matthew, I mean, in, in uh, Luke 5 and 4, it says, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. This is what I want to talk about today. Sometimes we're at um, areas in our life that we have um, may have experienced some things. These were experienced fishermen. They knew uh, where the fish were. They knew their occupation. Uh, I can be short with this and say, they were professionals and they knew that knew what they were doing. We too, in our lives, we can be professionals and uh, know what we're doing, but we never, ever, ever can leave God out of the equation because even though you might be a professional and know what you're doing, you still it's wise for you to hear from God. Praise the Lord. It's always in our best interest to hear from God. Because they had been fishing. They had toiled all night long and hadn't caught nothing. But when he left speaking, he told him to launch out in the deep. And Simon answered him and said, look at Simon's response. He said, Master, we have toiled all night. See, it's important to listen to God. But this was his response. We have toiled all night and have taken nothing. You might be at a point in your life, you have tried this, you have tried that. Try Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, because Jesus is the answer for the world today. And he says, and we have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Obedience is always better than sacrifice. The only thing we have to do is hear from God and follow his instruction. Praise the Lord. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But it's easier said than done because we got millions of people in this world that has not received from God simply because they choose to keep doing it their way. Praise the Lord. And that's why I said yesterday, we got plenty of people saying I'm doing me, but we need to stop doing us and stop doing church and do Jesus. Because church is just theatrics. You know, when, when I talk about, you know, when I talk about Christendom, I'm really talking about the mechanics of church. 
We are the church and we have to practice righteous living. Praise the Lord. But in verse six, and I'm getting out of here now, we're going to have to pick it back up tomorrow. I'm sorry. We got so many scriptures. We're going to have to pick it back up tomorrow if the Lord's will so we can finish it out. But it says here in verse, uh, in, in Luke chapter five, verse number six, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. That's why I say we need to trust God. We need to try God. Praise the Lord. The importance of listening, it will get us farther than what we what we think with our own wisdom and our own finite understanding. Now, they had already been fishing all night and hadn't caught none. or fished all day and hadn't caught anything. But when God tells you we have to listen to God, when God tells you you've been applying for jobs and you ain't found a job yet, and the Lord said, well, go over there and put in the application. And you probably said, well, I was over there last week. Why well, I need to go back over there? This time, God is stretching you out on your faith to show you that he, he's leading you now. He's directing your path now. And so when we quote that scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we need to be led of God. And God will not steer you wrong. Amen. So we're going to get ready to get out of here. You know, I, I like that saying Mother Flower says, so the grace of God uh, will not lead you, you know, where it won't keep you. And so God is not going to take you somewhere. He's not going to he's not going to direct you to a barren place. He's not going to take you to an unproductive land. He said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And so God provides for his people. He supplies. But we need to hear. We need to listen. I'm going to touch a couple things. You know, we need to listen to God's word. We need to listen to God's messenger. How can you hear without a preacher? You need to hear from God's messenger. Uh, sometimes, as I talked about in Hebrews, sometimes God speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ, all the time. All right? Believers, what they should not do, who they should not be listening to, is we should not be listening to false prophets and ungodly suggestions and influence. That's what we shouldn't listen to. We have to know being righteous, we have to hear from God. It's very, very important that we do. Those who refuse to listen to God, as I said, you're going to fall into condemnation. God wouldn't have you to fall into condemnation. God's people must not only listen, but as I said, they must put it into practice. There's plenty of examples of listening to the Lord. Uh, Luke 5 and 1 was one uh, occasion there. And you can also look at Luke 10 and 39. Okay? And there's there's a lot of other stuff that I uh, wanted to bring, but there's uh, an importance to hearing from God. God hears from us. We quote the scripture as I get ready to close. We quote 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And we said, if my people, which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And we say, and he, and will heal and he will heal the land, you know? Okay. But if we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and then he will hear from heaven and he will heal the land. Okay. But he says, now my eyes shall be open. Now I can see, as I talked about in, in uh, Matthew 13 and 14 and 15, and also in, you know, in Isaiah 6, 8 through 10, we can see but can't see. We can hear but not hear. Praise the Lord. But we need to hear from God. We can hear from God. God is speaking. But are we listening? Are we listening, my friend? God told them when they were stood at the Mount of Transfiguration. The voice came down when he saw, you know, uh, uh, Moses, uh, 
and Elijah and Jesus was standing there and the voice came and they fell to the ground. And when they got up, they saw only Jesus only. But the voice that spoke says, this is my beloved son and who I am well pleased. And it says, hear ye him. Are you listening, my friend? Praise the Lord. Are you listening to the voice of God? Because God is calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so I want to encourage you today. If you haven't been hearing from God, hear from him. Hear from him through uh, the spoken word, the written word, the preach word. Praise the Lord. The living word. Because God's word gives life. Okay? You know, we got to know, and, and you know, in God's word, there is life. But please, if you didn't get nothing else out of the uh, topic today, listening to God is important. And there is an importance of listening to God. Because the importance of listening to God we can receive the divine inspiration, the divine calling, and the Lord can direct our path when we hear from him. Aren't you tired of doing it your way by now? Aren't you tired of going through the same uh, rigmarole only to experience the same failure? It's time to hear from God. And if you're hearing from God, he will direct your path and he will give you a bright future and he will grant you uh, success, spiritual success. What is spiritual success? That means to be born of the water and of the spirit of God. You know what? Our flesh, we can't live save in the flesh without the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Ghost. And you know you need the Holy Ghost. You need to take in this word today and receive from God. If there's anything between you and your Savior, I admonish you to get it right today. If you're not saved and you desire to be saved, we're here on the line. Please call us that we might pray with you, touch and agree. Our telephone number is 414-628-0568. God wants to save you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. To whom the son has made free is free indeed. Praise the Lord. And so you can be liberated from sin, a sinful life, sinful lifestyle, such were some of us, but we've been washed by the blood of the lamb. We were sinners too. And we had to come to God in repentance and we had to lay prostrate before the Lord and confess our sins and call on the name of Jesus. You too can receive. And so we're not here uh, uh, to judge, but we are here to direct and encourage. And God is ultimately going to judge, even though we have the right to judge, but we're not here to condemn anybody. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but to save them. And so we don't have a message of condemnation. You're condemned already if you don't believe in the only begotten of the Father. Praise the Lord. And that's Jesus Christ. And so if you uh, want to receive uh, Jesus, uh, you know, you want to receive Christ in your life. If you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, you can get to know him today through repentance and water baptism. Please call us. We're on the line, 414-628-0568. Go to a church that will baptize you in Jesus' name. Now, we will do it, but I'm saying if you're not in our area or in our locale, go to an assembly or to a body of believers that baptize, that's oneness believers that believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism in Jesus' name, speaking in other tongues, as the spirit of God give utterance. I'm talking to you, my friend. If you hear, call us today. If you need prayer, we're on the line. 
414-628-0568. Please call us. Uh, we just want to let you know uh, that we're here on the line. Um, we want to say God bless you. Uh, we want to thank you for listening in. We hope we said something to encourage you, to inspire you, to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. God wants to save you. Until next time, I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom. We're with the Faith in God Internet TV broadcast. And we say God bless you in Jesus' name. to hear.